Hey agents, it's Dispatch. Welcome to the latest build tool for the Division 2. In this video, we'll walk through the benefits of the tool, how to use the tool, and what's coming in the future to look for as the tool develops. Now, enjoy this new intro that Skiba Tato Gamer made for me completely out of the blue. Not even joking, he just randomly sent it to me in a Reddit chat. It's awesome. This tool is called the Build Analysis Killing of Enemies tool, or the Blake tool for short. Yes, I totally made the acronym before figuring out what each letter means, but Blake is the guy doing all the work, and he's awesome, and he deserves all the credit for bringing this wonderful tool to life. So what does this tool do? This tool calculates hits to kill HTK via simulating damage to various targets in the game. No other tool available does this. If your HTK is 3, for example, adding 5% extra weapon damage isn't going to make a difference in your build. This was our discussion about when is damage not damage. This tool helps you see if your damage is really going to decrease your HTK in game or not. From there, we calculate rounds to kill, RTK, and time to kill, TTK. Rounds to kill is how many rounds you need to fire before killing the enemy, since not every bullet is going to hit the enemy. From there, TTK is calculated based on the firing interval of your weapon. Okay, let's talk about how to use it. Here's the tool. You can find it at the link in the description. Go ahead and pause the video and click that link so you can follow along. First, let's look at the introduction page. We are going to be working with discrete numbers here to most accurately reflect what's happening in game. Every other tool works with averages, average bullet damage, average DPS, etc. But you'll never see your average bullet damage on screen in game. We're tackling actual values at actual intervals on the actual health and armor of real targets. So we've got to make some assumptions in order to make this work. First assumption is weapons are used within their optimal range. We can't predict where agents are using their weapons, but everyone should be informed in using the proper weapon for the range they are fighting at. Limb shots are not calculated since those add unnecessary noise and we can't predict that. Targets are always out of cover. The most effective way to play is based on hitting enemies as they are coming out of the spawn door or if you're pushing them so they come out of cover. Your TTK will drastically increase if the enemy keeps ducking behind cover. Usually, we end up hitting enemies out of cover anyway. If you want to do the calculations based on enemies in cover, just set your damage to targets out of cover to zero. We are also assuming that we can fire until the enemy is dead, and also that there are no other sources of damage. This is because, again, we can't predict these, and these would create a ton of permutations, noise, and complexity to the model without creating any useful results. Currently, we're not calculating headshots, but this will come in a future release. One other huge caveat here. Pay attention. The enemy values are based on a generic firing range enemy, which should be equivalent to a standard quote-unquote assault enemy type. Specific enemy types and factions will have more or less armor and or health. As far as I know, there is no specific data on these exact values, so we're working with what we got. We are going to be testing to try and find these values later this year, so if you want to help out with that, let me know in the comments. So with this tool, we're getting as close as we can. We don't anticipate that we can perfectly tune our builds to exactly the HTK that we want on every single enemy type. However, we can make a judgment call on roughly what we're sacrificing if we take damage off our build for some utility. Up here at the top, we have slots for two different builds. Pull these values from your stat sheet in game or from the MX SWAT builds tool. Weapon damage is here. Weapon type damage is here. Weapon type damage is assault rifle damage, SMG damage, whatever is applying to the weapon that you have equipped. We separated them out since this is the way that the stat sheet in-game has it, even though these bonuses are added together in the same multiplier. Remember that total weapon damage comes from talents and is different than weapon damage. You can enter in your amplified damage sources here. If you want to know whether your talents are an amplified damage source or a total weapon damage source, click the reference sheet above.
if you have multiple sources of amplified damage, but each one in separate input in the tool. So if we're running Glass Cannon, Versatile, Flatline, and Striker, we will put each of these into its own input. This tool gives you a better understanding of where you can drop damage to add utility or weapon handling. For example, I prefer a slot or two of weapon handling instead of crit damage. Crit damage isn't usually going to make a difference in your HDK, but the quicker reload, reduce recoil, and reduce spread will reduce your RTK and TTK. Unfortunately, we can't predict that exact impact here, but it shows how you can make trade-offs without affecting your HTK much. So once we have both of our builds in, we just need to click the input build button. This will take us to this intermediate page to show that your build's been submitted and then you need to pick build summary and results. From here, they'll auto populate these tables with all the weapon stats that you should see on your weapon card and in your stat sheet. From here, we can run simulations or get the explanation over here. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Let's run the simulations. On this page, you'll see the minimum and maximum HDK, RTK, and TTK populate. From this, we can see that the range of possible outcomes can be very wide. If you adjust your build and it doesn't drastically change these values, that's probably a good trade-off. In some cases, you might even be able to remove attributes without any cost whatsoever. So how exactly does this tool work? The tool takes your build stats and plugs it into a formula that determines the values you should see in game. These are the calculated stats that you see up at the top. Your weapon damage calculated stat should match what you have on your weapon card in game. Your total weapon damage and amp damage is just for your information to show how much your talents are helping your damage. The next set of values show how much damage you will do to a target when certain conditions are met. Keep in mind, every value will include the out of cover multiplier as we talked about earlier. You can see the multipliers that are applied for each value. These multipliers are any combination of the following. Critical hit, headshot, damage to armor, damage to health. These are the values that you should see when shooting an enemy in game as long as the other assumptions are true. The only exception to this is when your bullet removes the rest of the armor from the target. In this instance, the amount of damage remaining after removing the armor will have damage to health applied and damage to armor removed. So once the tool has these values, it simulates the damage towards generic enemies using these values by running simulations. The number of simulations per enemy is determined by the number of simulations value from the first page. The tool uses your crit chance to quote unquote roll each bullet to see if it crits and then applies the proper value to the enemy's armor pool, just like the game would. Once the enemy's armor pool is gone, it will apply the damage to armor, damage to health conversion on the remaining damage from the last bullet and then each bullet afterwards will use the damage to health values. After the enemy is dead, that simulation is complete. The tool records the exact hits that it took that simulation to kill the enemy as a decimal. Then that decimal is rounded up to reflect the actual number of hits that it will take since you can't fire part of a bullet in game. Once the tool has repeated this process for the proper number of simulations, it totals the number of hits to kill and divides by the number of simulations to get the average hits to kill. The tool also takes the lowest HDK and the highest HDK from the results. These become the minimum HDK and maximum HDK, respectively. The tool then populates the table with these values. From there, the tool divides each of these results by the accuracy multiplier from the first sheet to give the RTK or rounds to kill. This is the number of rounds that you will actually have to fire on average to kill the enemy since none of us have 100% accuracy. If you put in 100% accuracy, you will get the same RTK as your HTK. If you put in 50%, your RTK will be twice your HTK. For each of these RTKs, the tool divides the RTK by the mag sides, then rounds down to determine how many reloads you will need to fire those rounds. The number of reloads is multiplied by the reload time that you entered in the first sheet. This is the total reload time for each RTK. This does not show up in the results section, it is used on the back end for the next calculation. From each of these 
RTKs, the tool then subtracts one round and then multiplies by the firing interval. The tool then adds the total reload time and this becomes the TTKs that we see on the sheet for each RTK. So it takes into account both the time it takes to fire each round and the number of reloads that it will take to kill that enemy. This tool works particularly well with our builds for farming on challenging. Obviously the best builds for these activities will be a status or regular headhunter build, but if you get tired of running the meta all the time you can use this to give you a less sweaty experience and just to try something new. Another very important thing to think about with this tool. As you can see if we go from solo scaling to four player scaling our HTK goes way up. So don't think that you can take your build that's tuned for solo challenging into a four player legendary. You will have a bad time and your team will too. At those really high HDKs, every bit of damage is going to help reduce your HTK to increase your survivability and do your damage roll on the team. So what's coming next for the tool? What do we have to look forward to? We're trying to work with the MX SWAT builds tool team and see if we can get something integrated with that. Who knows what will happen there, but we're hopeful for the best because it would be really great to be able to build your builds inside this tool and not just have to pull everything from your stat sheet. We're also going to put in a headshot toggle so that if you're going for headshots, we can calculate your HTK, RTK, and TTK. That is going to affect your accuracy, but you're going to have to put that in yourself. We can't really account for that. Hopefully soon we can account for some of the uptimes and stacking of certain talents, but that might be a little bit further out. All right, agents, that's the tool. What did you think? Is it useful? What more do you want to see in the future? How could it improve? Let us know so we can get those changes implemented as we continue to work on it. All feedback is welcome. We hope that you enjoy it and that it helps you out. Like the video if you think this is the right direction. Dislike the video if you think that we've gone rogue. Subscribe to the channel so that you get all the updates that we'll bring in the coming months. Once again, agents, this has been Dispatch. Take care out there.